So um, I guess the question was, uh, let's show or demonstrate how to go from the isolated beryllium atom to the hybridized beryllium atom in this beryllium dichloride compound, if you want to think about it that way. Right? So um, beryllium, uh, we first got to think about what its atomic orbitals look like. Okay, so. Um, and when we're talking about atomic orbitals, we're talking about the valence shape. Okay, so what we want to do is think about uh, drawing a condensed molecular orbital diagram. Is that okay? Or uh, atomic orbital diagram. So in this case, um, you can help me out if you want, but um, beryllium, if we look at the periodic table, right, it's going to have in its valence shell, just the two electrons in the 2s, right? So it's got the 2s orbital, but it's also got two, the three 2p orbitals very close in energy to that 2s. Does everybody remember that, what we were talking about? Like that. Okay, so let's fill its orbital diagram. So when we do that, it's only got the two electrons in its valence shell, so we fill it like that. Um, if we look at this, right, beryllium should not be able to make any bonds because it doesn't have any half-filled orbitals, right? And remember, we need half-filled orbitals to make bonds. Because when we're thinking about the chlorine atom, right, uh, when we're looking at its uh, 3p, so its valence shell. Right, it's got that half-filled orbital that it can make its bond out of. In fact, chlorine in this structure doesn't need to rehybridize. Recall that. So, beryllium, in order to make two bonds, needs to have two half-filled orbitals. Is everybody okay with what I'm saying? So what it does is it hybridizes those orbitals, So, how many orbitals will it hybridize? How about that? Two, two right? Because it needs to make two bonds. So, so I overlap that one. Okay. So it's going to hybridize with one. It's one 2s and one of its two p's. So, in other words, it's going to make two sp orbitals. Right? Because as many as you hybridize is as many as you get out. As many as you stick in the blender is as many you get out of it. Okay. So those are your sp orbitals. And they're called sp. Why? Because we use one s and one p orbital to make them. Okay. It's also still got it's two p orbitals that we didn't use that are still higher in energy. So when we fill this <coughs> using all the various rules of filling electron um, orbital diagrams that you know, we should get those two um, electrons now being split up into each one of those sp orbitals. Is that okay with everybody? And then, of course, um, what will happen, so now we've got, well, let's draw. We've got those electrons split up like that. And chlorine, if you want to think about Vesper theory. So remember, the chlorines are still using their 3p orbitals to do this. So if you want to think about it in these kind of hybridized orbital fashion, you've kind of got this sp orbital. And I'm just going to show one side of this, OK? Um, but it's one electron like that. And then you've got the chlorine. 
to draw it closer so we don't get any perspective questions. So, fluorine's got its p orbital that it kind of combines with there. And then the other side does the same thing. Any other questions on this? 